What's up, world? It's your girl, Bobby Pin, and we are here with something brand spanking new. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Welcome to the Ink. What's that, you ask? My new weekly entertainment wrap up series. We're going to talk about the top five trending stories in entertainment, hilarity, or otherwise noteworthy that we got to discuss. So let's get right on it. Drake. <laughs> They are not going to let him live down this hotline bling thing ever, and why should they? You made a joke of yourself, so we're going to clown your ass out, okay? He's out at a Raptors game, being Drake, sitting courtside. Hotline bling comes on in the arena, and everyone stops. <laughs> like spirit drake hit the hotline bling moves everything that all his fans wanted to see so salute to you drake that was really cute of you to participate i'm curious to see what you're gonna do for your next stunt because no shade your entire career kind of has been based off of you being a joke we've been making fun of you since let's hold on we're going home I'm just curious, you know what I mean? Are you ever not going to be a viral meme, or is that just your key to success? And if that is the case, I ain't mad at you, brother. Do what's working. And that, my friends, is working. We love it. We always talk about you, man. <laughs> so, yeah. Next up, we got to talk about Remy Ma. She was hot back in the late 1990s, early 2000s, before there was a Nicki Minaj, right after there was a Lil' Kim and Foxy Brown. We were dying and waiting for a female in hip-hop, and Remy Ma stepped in, and she gave us conceit. It. And all the girls everywhere, whether they were cute or not, felt good for that three minutes that that song was playing at every single party. And then, guess what happened? She got knocked. It happens, man. When you're a real nigga and you're doing real nigga shit, real nigga shit happens. She was locked away for a couple of years, but she's back. They released her. She's a free woman again. And the first thing she decides to do in her professional career is what? Loving hip hop New York. Well, I bet you'll fit right in though, and I'm certain you'll hold your own, as you told us in this clip here. Kick to it. None of these rap chicks ever, whether they're past, present, or future, could f with me, period. I say exactly how I feel whenever I felt like it. And most of the time, no one says anything about it. I can't be mad at you, girl. You've been gone for a really long time. The climate has changed. You got to figure out your way and get back in there. Now, your man Papoo, salute to him, man. When we think about people holding down their, their significant other while they're locked up, we always think of a down-ass chick. Well, it's some down-ass niggas out there, too. So, salute to you, Papoose, for holding your woman down. You was keeping the pot warm. But where were you when Remy Ma released these pictures in her bra and panties, though? Because that needs some answering. I'm not sure what to make of them. With all due respect, you are snatched, Remy. I don't know exactly how old you are, but I would assume you are a woman of a particular age, as Miss Wendy Williams would say. You were holding up pretty well for the curves and the, and the tight waist, but this picture is a little unflattering. And especially as someone who's just been released from prison, you probably want to be mindful of all the photos that you post. As someone who I would assume had a little bit of money and you got a team and people behind you that want to see you do good, pretty sure we could have got you a professional photo shoot and not some shit in the back closet looking crazy. On to the next story. At the top of this week, we saw Miss Patti LaBelle on The Breakfast Club with Charlamagne, DJ Envy, and Angela Yee. That's my DJ Envy impression. How did I do? <laughs> it was a really cute interview right off the tails of Miss Patti LaBelle Breaking record, selling $2.3 million worth of sweet potato pies in one weekend, all due in part to a viral video that caught wind and just, I don't know what it was about this video that made people want to go try these pies. Patty. If anybody know Patty the Bell, tag her in the video. Patty. Whoa. Other than the fact that James Wright, that's the guy who actually put the video together. He totally channeled Patti LaBelle. As you know, Charlemagne, he will say whatever to whomever. You know, one of my nicknames for you is the voice of the young struggle face. What? However, this was a really respectful interview. And I salute you, Charlemagne, for knowing exactly how to handle that. I haven't heard anybody else talk about it, so I could just be reading more into it than it really was. But it looks a little shady, like Miss Patti LaBelle maybe wasn't feeling Angela all that much. The entire interview, honey, Patti LaBelle is talking to Charlemagne, to Envy, and her back is to Angela. Unless, of course, Angela asked a question and she would, like, turn and face her. But... 
she was not here for Angela for whatever reason, except to throw that foot out there and to let Angela know that when she steps out, every time she steps out, honey, she will be beat, makeup done, wig snatched, no doubt about it, she is going off. Oh my God, the interview was so endearing and I really grew to love Miss Patty LaBelle a little bit more. I done lost my hat, y'all. So a couple of things that we learned from the interview is that Miss Patty LaBelle does not use a smartphone. She uses a flip phone because she's true to the game, not new to the game, and I am here for it. She also stays away from social media. She doesn't know anything about the fakes and the frauds and the Insta honeys. And additionally, Miss Patty LaBelle is going through menopause. If math serves me correctly, if she's a woman of 70 and beyond then certainly she started menopause at least a decade ago. So she still having hot flashes. Oh my God, that's kind of scary. Earlier in the week, we saw TMZ catch up with Miss Patti LaBelle in New York City. They asked her what she thought of her pie sales. And in true diva fashion, she took all the credit, honey. My pies were already selling, she told the reporter. And I can't be mad at that. However, Patty, we all know that's a little inaccurate. I didn't know that you had any pies. I did know that you had a cookbook, but I didn't know that you were selling pies. Definitely not out of Walmart. And I'm pretty sure many of my friends, family members didn't know either. So shout out to you, James Wright. And salute to you, Miss Patty, for coming back, giving credit where credit is due, and inviting Mr. James Wright to spend Thanksgiving with you. How crazy is that, James? You have to tell us how that was. I know it had to be amazing. Clearly a big fan of her. You kicked off your shoes. You gave us the... The Patty Flail. And it would be dope if you could share a story with us. So I'll be searching for you. If anybody knows him, make sure that you comment down below. Send him my way. We want to talk to him here on the bobbypins.com. Next up, bad girl Riri. Rihanna has been killing it, y'all. 2015 has definitely been her year. She was named Dior's first ever in 80 years. Their first ever African-American spokesmodel. Last year, you were named creative director for Puma. And we actually got to see some of your collection roll out this year, which has been really exciting to see you and ASAP Rocky look dope as fuck together. And I definitely want those sneakers, so... Puma, if you hear me, holla. Rihanna also just announced that she has formed her own talent agency, which is super exciting. Really great to see you step into this leadership role. But can you believe that Rihanna is on album number eight? Do you remember Ponde Replay, girl? Like, so Mr. DJ, come Ponde Replay. Won't you turn the music up? Do y'all remember that, Rihanna? S-O-S, please. Do y'all remember this, Rihanna? She is eight albums deep. And earlier this week, she finally announced a release date for her long-anticipated eighth studio album, Anti. Or is it Anti? Anti. Or Anti. Whatever it is, it's coming out November 27th. Black Friday. Make sure you check it out. It's actually going to be in stores right next to Chris Brown's Royalty, which I'm super curious to hear as well. He's been on his promo run. Rihanna's kind of been silent, but she's Rihanna. She could drop some shit like that. I understand that it's going to be released exclusively on Tidal. Not sure when it'll be available on iTunes, Google Play, and any other platforms, but you better believe it's coming and it's coming soon. As if that wasn't enough. As if Rihanna hadn't done enough for us already by finally giving us this album that we've been waiting for. She announces a world tour. What? She's going on tour, kicking off February 2016. You can grab your tickets to a show near you, or if you're feeling froggy, travel the country, or for that matter, the world, and catch the anti-world tour. Tickets going to sell December 3rd. Make sure you look up Ticket Fly, Ticket Master. I don't know where they're selling them joints, but wherever you get your tickets from, I'm pretty sure they'll be there because she's fucking Rihanna. Last but not least, Black Twitter is the shining star for Thanksgiving week. I don't know who is in charge of Black Twitter. Whoever you are, would you please stand up? Because every morning I log into Twitter, all the people in my timeline from all different cities, all different walks of life are all talking about the same topic every single day. When we get these crazy hashtags that remind me of Twitter 2008, which I miss those days, by the way, guys, when we used to go in on the trending topics and it was about having fun. Black Twitter is the best to ever do it. Earlier this week, I would guess probably like Tuesday coming down my timeline, celebrities only black people will know. And I found myself dying on a couple of occasions. I missed the days of sick comes.
So the people I want to highlight, Bobby J. Thompson, he used to be bad in everything he played. That was his whole typecast, right? He was just a bad little black boy. He was misunderstood. That just needed some discipline. He had a big heart. You feel me? He's a good person. He's a good person, but he was bad as shit. Well, he is all grown up. When I saw the name scroll the timeline, like many others, you're curious, right? Like child stars, a lot of times they don't grow. So I was just curious, you know, how he has matured. And Bobby J. Thompson is now 19 years old. He looks tall. Can't really tell in the pictures. He's giving all this sexy back. I'm curious, where you at, Bobby? Let us know. Holla at me from one Bobby to another. Holla at me and let me know what's next. I'd love to drop that exclusive for you. In addition to that, the standout comment. And he stood out for the simple fact that uh, he was white. <laughs> so they put his face up there and said that he's the one white comedian that only black people would know, which was fact. And the crazy thing was I recognized him immediately, but I honestly didn't know his name. So in order to find his name, I went back to Google. And what did I search? white guy from comic view that is what you're known for brother and i ain't mad at you the one thing that i liked about you from comic view was that yes you're a white guy making black jokes and occasionally uh code switching with the tone of your voice and, and the different things that you would say but it never came across as condescending or that you were making fun of black people rather your admiration and acceptance was totally felt like your accounts of situations that happened to you were so authentic that we can't be mad at you and that's probably why you have been in movies with the greatest the most legendary black comedians ever man we saw you in daddy daycare with eddie murphy we saw you in Little Man with Charlotte Marlon Wayans. And we definitely have seen you in the Think Like a Man franchise right alongside Kevin Hart. So you've been doing your thing, brother. Last but not least, I got to point out my dude, Kelly Perrine. I'm not even sure if I'm saying his name right or not, but you're going to know who I'm talking about when I put his picture up right here. Oh, my God. Do you know that guy? So the whole joke with him on Twitter was that he had an exclusive contract to do all the UPN shows. And you know what? When I looked him up on Internet Movie Database, now, the crazy thing is, I actually do remember him from some non-UPN sitcoms, including Mad About You. I don't know what it was about that show, but as a little girl, I used to think that was so funny. He was also on the Drew Carey show, and he made a couple of appearances on Living Single. However, all of us know him as the weird godfather and Flex's best friend on One and One with Kyler Pratt, who also actually made that list of celebrities only black people know. Um... And he was also on the Malcolm and Eddie show. Y'all need to get into it. Kelly Perrine, he has an extensive resume with a lot of things that are not just starring black people. So get hip, y'all, even though that shit was funny. <laughs> so whatever the case, man, it's your girl, Bobby Penn, wrapping things up on the ink. Your top five trending topics in entertainment, hilarity, and anything else that's noteworthy. It's your girl, Bobby Penn, signing out.